I sent a tweet out yesterday, and in that tweet I explained that William Ruto is under siege, yes, but I am a big believer in the cause and effect theory. It did not just happen that William Ruto is under siege. William Ruto brought this upon himself. I have never seen a human being moving at 500 kilometers per hour. <laughs> <laughs> William Ruto, for all intents and purposes, sorry to be so blunt on air, ran the government in the president's first term. And his tentacles were anywhere and everywhere. <laughs> if you look at even at clips of the campaigns and of everything that happened up to the nullification and beyond, the level of finesse when it comes to mobilization, when it comes to name calling, when it comes to Mchongoano, where literally you are bringing crowds and belittling leaders as if they were primary school kids. To where kids are even, I remember one time I called one of my workers and the DP was in uh, Mombasa. And I called one of my workers and I could hear so much chaos and he told me, Ebu ni kupigia boss, tunasikiza hapa DP. Because he knows how to deal on the issues. And the way that he was moving, even with these harambes, okay. which Raila questioned, then they were in the media. I mean, you can go to a place and give a donation of 18 million Kenya shillings in cash, in a church, and women are literally screaming, women of women's guild. William Ruto brought all this upon himself. Because obviously someone will take a step back and say, wait a minute, this guy is dangerous. What if he's to become president? And so, there are some powers that be that took a look and said, wait a minute, if this guy becomes the head of state, becomes the head of state, we're going to have a problem. So I'm explaining how they thought. And by the way, if it was not for this BBI thing, those who have studied William and know him, William who is a teetotaler, William who is in the office by 5 a.m., William who will open something in Makadara, then you see him in in Transoia, in the same day, then in the evening, the then you hear he has crossed into Sudan, the same William, he would have just become president after a 10 minute exercise. And so that's why you see the real daggers. You can see how Atuali and Murada, when they speak, mm -hmm. you can see they're almost going crazy. It's, it's a fact. They say we can't, he, he shouldn't even be on the ballot. And so, Anyone then aligned to him? We've seen severally. I mean, there was a press conference when Moses Kuri was talking about Kumwaga Kitoweo, where they did the numbers of the MPs allied yes. to the deputy president. That was in parliament. Personally, I feel that his approach was wrong. And I've told them both privately and publicly. I feel that he could have, the seat was his anyway. But the over aggression, especially against the backdrop of the president saying, Ayub, this is my last term. Jamen in his idea. Let's work on the pledges, man. Let's work on this together. Okay. Because that's, well, that, that's apparently what happened in the first PG from 2017. But then, so you agree on that. And then the next weekend, you see someone doing a harambe in Maralal. Then, you know, Ruto will go even to Kisumu and do a harambe. So that does not advance the president's agenda. Is that perhaps the cause of all this whipping that we're seeing in terms of his allies being plucked out of plum committee positions in parliament, for instance? It is. And if you look even at his output once again, even in terms of campaign, and even when it came to threatening judges, go, the footage is all there on YouTube. What did he say? That yeah. was after the nullification. Yeah, he said, the judges, you, you have had your say. We will also have our day. <laughs> that, that, that is September 2017. I Can mean, you joke oh, with a man like that? Okay.